Hi everyone, welcome to this video entitled Understanding Zero Voltage Switching in Half Bridge Converters. In this video, we will see first the introduction. We will talk about half bridge transistors turn on and turn off. Same thing for the diodes of the half bridge. We will see some ideas related to incorrect designs and everything will be supported with QSPICE simulations. Here we have a relevant video related to this topic, Power Electronics number 1, entitled MOSFET Hard Switching Process. Today we are going to talk about zero voltage switching, which is completely different. Zero voltage switching is a soft switching process in which the losses of the switches can be made very low. So it's interesting to compare the CVS, the zero voltage switching, with the hard switching process that we saw in this previous video. So if you are interested in this topic, please take a look also to this video, Power Electronics number one. So today we are going to focus on the half bridge converters. We know the half bridge very well. We have two switches in series. Here we have the gate signals, the switches operate alternatively. So we are turning on the switch S1 during this time and then during this other half of the switching period we are turning on the switch S2. So at the end between these two points A and B we are going to generate a square waveform as shown here. Then we have a filter made of inductors, capacitors and then finally the load. In this case we are generating here an AC signal so it's operating as an inverter but it's possible also to add a rectifier here at the output and a filter and then uh, implement a DC-DC converter. But in any case the point is that we have a half bridge and we have a current I coming out of the half bridge in any application that we can think of. And this current, depending on the switching frequency, depending on the filter and so on, is going to have three possibilities regarding the phase with respect to the output voltage. The first one is shown here. We can have the current lagging the voltage. Usually this is known as zero voltage switching. We can have the current perfectly in phase with the voltage and we can have the current in advance with respect to the voltage. This is usually known as zero current switching operation. Today we are going to focus on zero voltage switching. We are going to study how is the switching in the hard bridge under this operating mode. And with this operating mode and using MOSFETs as switches, we can attain a very low switching losses. So we can increase efficiency and we can also increase the operating frequency so we can make everything smaller. We can decrease the size of the inductors and the size of the capacitors. So let's analyze firstly qualitatively what is happening during the switching in the half bridge. We have two critical points. One is when the current is crossing through zero at this point here and at this point here. And the other one is this point when the voltage changes polarity. This point and at this point here. Starting by this point here when the current is going through zero, we have the following situation. We are applying positive voltage at the output and we have a negative current. So the situation is assumed here. This switch here is closed and the current goes in the negative direction, going back into the voltage source. So in principle, we say that the current goes through diode D1, considering that S1 is a unidirectional switch. For example, if it's a IGBT, the current is going through diode D1. But if S1 is a MOSFET, then the channel of the MOSFET can conduct. So the current is going to be distributed between the channel and the diode, depending on the voltage that we have across the switch. 
if the voltage is below the threshold voltage of diode D1, the current is going through the switch if the switch is activated. If the switch is not activated, all the current is going through diode D1. So in principle, we can say that the current goes in this direction and diode D1 is going to stop conducting in a natural way. So we don't have reverse recovery losses. It's not like um, the diode operating in a DC-DC converter in which when we activate the switch we are applying negative voltage to the diode and forcing the diode to stop conducting very quickly. Here the process is natural and therefore there is not going to be significant recovery losses. And then the current goes positive so it's going to be reversed and going through the switch S1. So we can see that in principle the switch start conducting with zero voltage and therefore there will not be significant switching losses. So let's now analyze qualitatively the other points at which we have the switching are this point here and this point here. These points are when the switches are turned off. For example at this point here the current is positive, is going through the channel of S1, then the signal, the gate signal of S1 is removed and the current has to circulate through diode D2. Diodes are very good starting to conduct, so there is not going to be significant losses in the diode and the only problem that we have is here. Uh, in the switch S1 because it has to go from this situation in which is conducting to this situation in which is open and handling the voltage VCC across it. So in principle we are going to have hard switching here when diode D2 applies the voltage VCC to switch S1. However, the situation is not so simple and this is so because of two main reasons. One is the parasitic capacitances C1 and C2 that we usually have in parallel with the switches. For example, in the case of MOSFETs, we have um, parasitic capacitance in parallel which can be quite high. And the second one is because usually we have a dead time between the gate signals of switch 1 and switch 2. In order to avoid a shoot through current through the switches that is going to create a very high current and losses in the switches. So the actual situation around this point here when the switch S1 is turned off is going to be like this. At the beginning we have the current circulating through the channel of S1, then S1 is going to be turned off and the current I is going to circulate to a split in halves into capacitors C1 and C2. So capacitor C1 is at the beginning discharged and it has to be charged up to VCC and capacitor C2 is the contrary situation. Capacitor C2 at the beginning is charged with the voltage VCC and has to be discharged until zero. So as long as there is a voltage across C2, the diode D2 is reversed polarized so it cannot conduct. Once the voltage across C2 reaches zero and also the voltage across C1 at the same instant reaches VCC, then diode D2 can start conducting and is going to handle the full current I. So this is the real situation that we have during the turning off process of the switches and we are going to see that this is even better because due to the effect of these capacitances we can decrease the losses during the turn off process. So let's analyze now the turn off process of S1 with more detail. 
this is the situation. This current source is the current that is circulating through the channel. So at the beginning is equal to the current I that is injected into the filter. And then when the switch is turned off, the current is going to decrease. We are going to assume that this is a linear evolution following this expression here. And we want to calculate the charging and discharging of capacitors C1 and C2. The first thing that we have to see is that because of the addition of both voltages is equal to Vcc, we can take the derivative which is going to be equal to zero and at the end get this expression and finally we can see that the currents through the capacitors are going to be always equal and with reversed polarity. So with this we can obtain the different equations very easily in the two intervals from zero to Tf when the current through the channel is decreasing we get this value for the current through the channel. We apply Kirchhoff laws and we know that both current are equal and with reverse polarity. So at the end we can get these expressions very easily and by integrating the current through the capacitor we finally get this equation here which is the voltage across C1. So the voltage across C1 is going to follow this parabolic evolution during this interval. And then after Tf we have no current through the channel, so we have these two conditions and we have a linear evolution for the voltage of capacitor C1. So we have this evolution until reaching the value of Vcc. Of course we are assuming that all this time is very small so we can assume that the current I is going to remain constant during the whole process. So this is a, usually a good approximation. So at the end the waveforms are, are shown here and we can see that the losses that we are going to have are within this interval between 0 and Tf in which we have simultaneously current and voltage across the channel. So one possibility to decrease these losses is to make this interval very small by increasing the value of the capacitance. The voltage that we have at this point here is this one. So if we increase the value of capacitance C, this voltage is going to decrease and the losses are going to decrease because the voltage here is going to remain very low. So the voltage times the current, which is the instantaneous power, is going to be very small. So even it can be interesting to add an external capacitance to slow down the voltage rise so the losses are going to be negligible or are going to be diminished during this switching process. Here we have some more information about the process of turning off. Here we have the transition, the parabolic evolution of the voltage during time Tf from A to B. And then when there is no more current through the channel, the voltage across capacitor C1 is going to increase linearly until Vcc. From the point of view of the characteristics of the MOSFET, the point A is situated like this. We are applying voltage to the gate, so the channel is conducting, handling the current I with a voltage across the channel, V ohm. And then if we keep this voltage small, we can approximate the trajectory from A to B, as shown here at constant voltage equal to V ohm. And then the trajectory from B to C is like this, with zero current until reaching the voltage Vcc. So as we have seen in previous slide, if we want to keep this voltage small, we need uh, that the interval delta T must be much greater than Tf and delta T can be approximated with this expression so we get this final expression for the value of capacitance C which is the total capacitance that we have in parallel with the channel. So under these conditions this is the 
power that we are going to have. And these are the uh, losses, the energy loss that we have during the transition. Because V on is very small, this energy loss is going to be also very small. However, the situation is much more complicated because here we have our MOSFET, we have a parasitic capacitance, CDS in parallel with the channel, we have the body diode of the MOSFET and maybe we are placing an external capacitor also to decrease the switching losses. So the model is as shown here. We have the current through the channel, CDS, the body diode and the external capacitance. But the additional problem is that CDS is non-linear. So CDS is changing in value depending on voltage VDS. is decreasing when the voltage VDS is increasing. So the point is that when we are measuring the current that is entering into the switch, into the MOSFET, we are not only measuring the current through the channel, but also the current that is going into this parasitic capacitance CDS. And then we have the current going into the external capacitance. So these two are in parallel and we are going to have some current going through the external capacitance and some current going into the parasitic capacitance. So this is why when we measure the current through the switch and the voltage across the switch, we are not going to have exactly these waveforms. Let's do a simulation to see this better. So this is the circuit for the simulation. We have here the half bridge. The filter is just an inductor and the load is a resistor. So in this way we are going to have always inductive current. The current is going to be lagging the voltage at this point. We are using this component here to drive the switches. This component allows us to control the dead time that we are going to have for the switches with this parameter here. And this is the version of the driver that we presented in this previous video, LTSPICE number 10. This is the version for QSPICE. So here on the right we have the waveforms, here in dark green we have the current through the uh, switch, the drain current through the switch, but we have to remember that this current is the current through the channel and also the current through the parasitic capacitance CDS. Then in green here we have the current through the external capacitance C1, which in this case we have selected to be 0 0.0 nanofarads. And in blue we have the voltage across the switch between these two points, the voltage across external capacitance and also across the switch. So here we can see how the current through the drain is decreasing very quickly. And we have to remember that this current is not only the current through the channel, it's also the current through the parasitic capacitance CDS. So approximately at this point, the current through the channel is reaching zero. And this is so because here, in this interval, we have a constant current circulating through capacitance C1, and the value is 1 ampere. And the value of this current here is 0 0.5 amperes. So the addition of both is 1.5 amperes, which is the half of the total current that we have here entering into the filter, which is 3 amperes. So we can see how the current, this current of 3 amperes, is splitting between the external capacitance and the internal parasitic capacitance in this proportion. So from this point, after TF, we have the linear charging of capacitance C1 and CDS in parallel. The total time interval is 61 nanoseconds approximately and TF as we can see something like 20 nanoseconds. Well, this presentation is getting long and we have many more things to talk about this topic. So we are going to stop here for today and we will continue in the next video. 
Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.